The Internet of Things is growing fast, but new connections bring new challenges. Security, scalability, control. How do you get the best from IoT in the cloud without exposing your data and devices to the worst? Soracom is purpose-built for IoT with affordable global connectivity and secure cloud integration to let you control, scale, connect, and protect your IoT network. From startup to enterprise, across industries and around the world, you create, we connect. Hey everybody, welcome to the Soracom Hackstorm. I'm really excited, we've been planning this for weeks. Uh, we've got a bunch of awesome guests joining us today. Uh, I'll bring them on in a moment to introduce them, but I just want to introduce the event we're doing. So basically we created this Soracom IoT Starter Kit uh, using an Arduino MKR GSM or MKR uh, Narrowband. Basically it's a starter kit that has everything you need from sensors to uh, cellular connectivity. Uh, to get started on creating your first like IoT project. And so uh, I'm going to bring on a couple of our guests real quick just to introduce them. And then I'm going to go into a bit of a demo uh, to show you what you can do with this kit. So we have Alex Glow from Hackster, How's John it going? Coleman, uh, JR, uh, John from Soracom, and Zach, uh, who's an awesome friend of ours who makes awesome projects. So uh, we'll have a couple more guests joining us later today. Uh, and we'll be going for the full hour. So, uh, yeah, uh, I'm going to dive into this demo and then we'll bring you all back on and we're going to just chat about basically as I called it a hack store, meaning we're just going to live hack a little and brainstorm what we can do. So I'm really excited. So, uh, we'll see you guys back in a moment. Cool. All right. Just going to share my screen. All right, so uh, this is our GitHub repository for our uh, starter kit. Uh, you can find it at github.com slash soracom dash labs, and it's the Soracom MKR IoT starter kit. Uh, like I said, the starter kit comes with a bunch of growth sensors, this carrier board so you can connect them. So it's got a temperature sensor, an ultrasonic sensor, a magnetic read switch, a buzzer, a button, an accelerometer, and a GPS. So you can create acid trackers with it, uh, you can create, uh, you know, uh, the demo I'll have, which I'll show in a moment, is a, uh, a pretty fun one. It's a, um, oh, we don't have the picture there, a, uh, a pie sensor. So, yeah, uh, basically when you get the starter kit, uh, best of things, uh, you'll log in and register a SIM card. Uh, and so uh, the SIM card is here. Basically, this gives you full connectivity from 2G, 3G, LTM, uh, CADM1, narrowband IoT. So the narrowband IoT and CADM1 are networks for uh, connecting over 5G, uh, specifically for the Internet of Things. So the starter kit comes in two flavors, the Arduino MKR GSM 1400 or the MKR narrowband uh, 1500. So what we sent out to our awesome guests is the narrowband 1500. Um, so uh, just to give you a rundown of what I did to create the demo I'm about to show, uh, I registered my SIM card. And then one of the first things I did is I created a group for it. So they're under this Arduino group. Um, this is in the Soracom dashboard. And inside groups, in the groups menu, you can go into a group and configure all sorts of different connections. This is what really makes Soracom powerful is that um, Normally with the carrier, you're just getting connectivity. With Soracom, we kind of stand in between your connectivity and the cloud and the larger internet. So your device can have its own IP address and you can tunnel directly into it. Uh, you can use a single unified endpoint to uh, push out to um, what we call Soracom Harvest, which is our data collection API. You can use Soracom Beam to uh, configure uh, basically like a, a connection forwarder across different protocols. So, for example, one of the projects I did, uh, I uh, used MQTT uh, to connect to either AWS IoT, Adafruit IO, um, and uh, the Blink app, which is a awesome IoT app, uh, app builder that's all visual. And on my device, I just have a basic MQTT uh, connection. But 
all the security is being handled by your SIM card. So your SIM is your authentication. And we also have a feature that lets you do an IMEI lock. So uh, Soracom lets you create like all these forwarders and connections to all these different services really easily while giving you like extreme security. Um, for this demo, I enabled Soracom Harvest. So in here, you can just turn on Soracom Harvest. Now, when you use either the Harvest endpoint or the, this unified endpoint, uh, all you have to do is post it. You don't have to add any extra credentials. That's all done by the fact that your device is authenticated to the Soracom network. So once I enabled that, I just loaded up a very basic sketch. So we'll go back into here. So in this repository, uh, we've got examples for uh, both devices and in here I just added this fun little demo which is the Pi alarm so this uses the read switch and the buzzer um, and the unified endpoint pushing to harvest data so essentially it connects to the narrowband network and when a magnet is removed from the read switch sensor area it buzzes and then sends alert out to harvest uh, and so where then I can look at it with the harvest data menu. So you can select buy your SIM card from this menu and choose, uh, so example here, I can select one of my two devices that I have and I can search for data from a range that that has published the harvest data. So you'll see that my Pi has been stolen many, many times. Uh, so zero is when the magnet is uh, present or not. And so from that, I was able to create, we have this other awesome thing called Suricom Lagoon, which lets you create a quick dashboard. So in here, I, uh, let's see where my, uh, well, let's go to the Lagoon console here and you'll see. So I created this quick dashboard that, when it loads, so it hasn't received a value in a while, so we can change the range at which it searches. So we'll say, uh, the last 30 days and refresh that. So it says someone stole my pie. And so this is uh, one of the cool things about Sarcom, right? You can connect your device securely, publish to the unified endpoint, have that forward into harvest data, collect all that data, and then create a quick dashboard and just say, use one of the values from um, Sarcom or from my device. So you can add these queries. So in this case, I said, you know, it's a metric, it's from an air sim, it's this device. And then it tells me all the different uh, JSON uh, key values that have been sent by that device. And so I could say, that's my value I'm looking at. And my value mappings are, if it's zero, yes, uh, my pie is safe. Or if it's one, someone stole my pie. And so that's horrible and we don't want that. Uh, so I'm gonna show a quick video of this working. So. So I didn't have an actual Pi to test that with, so I used a Raspberry Pi, which is close enough. I'm assuming everybody is very concerned about Pi security. Um, yeah, and so there are a couple of other things you can build too. So I'm gonna open up the uh, Soracom blog. So if you go to our website uh, and click on blog, I've got a guide or a uh, blog post that kind of walks through what the starter kit has, a couple of things you can build with it, like this universal alarm system, which obviously we'll use for pies. Um, you can create an asset tracker with the GPS module. You can create the ultimate button, right? Since Soracom can connect to all these other systems. Uh, you know, we even have something called uh, Soracom Funk, which lets you do uh, uh, basically built in micro functions that run in the cloud so that you can trigger all sorts of different events, use different APIs. You can link it to AWS uh, IoT or have it connect through an AWS Lambda function uh, or GCP or Azure. And uh, from there, you can do anything you can do with those platforms. You can have a button that orders a pizza or kicks off a automation workflow or texts your friend a funny joke and you can annoy the crap out of them. Uh, you can create an environment monitor uh, really quickly and easily uh, using the DHT sensor. I've done some stuff with cloud control lighting because I love art. So uh, this is an example of a uh, 
the LED matrix I got from, uh, I think I had a fruit and just hooked it up to the, uh, the power to the board on the carry board and the uh, data and ground from the signal line. So you can control NeoPixels. And uh, one of the other great things you could do with this, with the SORCOM API is have it on boot, your device can pull down its configuration. So you can have like these tags that you store on there in the cloud and bring it to the device. And again, you don't have to store any security credentials. Um, yeah, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen for a second and give you a look at the actual kit. So we're gonna switch cameras here. All right, so it's a little, it's upside down, but you get the idea. So this is the MKR, narrow, Arduino MKR Narrowband 1500. So it's got uh, ARM SAMD processor, uh, and, or a microcontroller and a um, U-Blox SAR R4 uh, 10M uh, cellular uh, modem. So SIM card is inside already. Uh, and this is kind of what a SIM card will look like when you get it. So it's tri-cut so you can use it on other devices if you have. And it's got this Grove carrier board. So Seed Studio makes these awesome ready to click sensors. So you don't have to do any soldering. But again, it is a full-featured Arduino, so you could plug in your own custom things. Like I said, I used this uh, NeoPixel matrix. And Arduino uh, has this great open source ecosystem of libraries. So there's libraries from everything from driving LEDs to driving uh, air quality sensors and uh, actuators. And so you could build robots, you could build notification systems, all sorts of fun stuff. So when I wired this up, I just connect it to these screw terminals on here and plug this into the board. And Bob's your uncle, I've got a ready to go cloud controlled LED marquee. Yeah, all the awesome stuff you can do with it. We're gonna switch back. All right, and now, uh, having said and shown all that, I'd like to talk to some people we sent our kit to. So I'm gonna bring up Alex, JR, John, Zach again. Hey, everybody. Hey. How's everybody doing? Hello. Not bad. I was just looking at, um, curious about connecting it to if this, then that, because I was, uh, I have an idea. <laughs> <laughs> also involving LEDs. I was thinking about making a thing that, like, freaks out behind me if something happens on the internet. And if this, then that is, like, a great service for that. Um, like maybe if someone tweets at me or if uh, something like that. Oh, that would be great. You could do it for like if somebody calls you uh, in person when you're not home. I was just looking at this comment. Ooh. Uh, if you use the tiny ML model and plug the mic uh, microphone onto the board, Ooh. you could have like a, hey, uh, somebody's calling you while you're home or shouting your name, and then it actually calls you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Also, Arjit says, hey. <laughs> hey, what's up, Arjit? Familiar faces, or names, anyway. Oh, there's a face. <laughs> cool. So who's had a chance to dig into the kit? What are your first thoughts? All right, David. Yeah, I, I set it up last night. Um, it was really, really easy to get it going. In fact, it was it was too easy. <laughs> I sent a <laughs> message last night. I'm like, where do I find like the secrets and stuff? Like, uh, there's got to be some kind of like pin and stuff. What I, what I <laughs> it's like, no, it just works. So, um, yeah, I got it working with the harvest example, and I have a whole little dashboard getting <gasps> data. From the, oh. the board already from the temperature sensors, so it was really easy to get it going. That's awesome. It's like that Wait. thing with the cake mixes where they had to make it so you have to add an egg in the oil, or else you didn't feel like you were doing anything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like suspicious, so it worked perfectly for you. Say it again. <laughs> nah, it worked that wonderful. The documentation was amazing. The example was rewarding and exciting, and I had an amazing experience. It was the ultimate developer experience. <laughs> John, John is waiting to be added to. Yeah. Now I'm just waiting to have a chance to open up the kit. Came in at the end of the last project I was working on, so I gotta go back and redo it the kit now. But if the documentation is that good, I'm excited for that. All right. Also, I just want to say real quick, uh, here's also Don and Elijah. Sorry, I didn't see you guys backstage. No uh, worries. Hey. <laughs> Sorry. Solid. 
How's it going? Uh, it's going good. Fantastic. I'm digging the uh, the creeper hoodie, man. <laughs> yeah, thanks. I've been wearing it since second grade, pretty much. <laughs> um, I feel like a latecomer. I just got super into Minecraft. Oh, I wonder if there's some kind of an integration I could do with that. Hmm. Yeah. I've never done like Minecraft plus electronics, but I know that people do. Oh. I think I've seen a couple of things. I know that there's like a Minecraft API, so you could, in theory, have Minecraft affect the real world. So oh. Like, build like a a remote thing that existed in a physical version of whatever you built in Minecraft. You could have like a gong that people hit virtually that then gets hit. In yeah. Life. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I uh, play with my siblings. It's like our way of staying connected across, like we're spread across two continents and like thousands of miles. And if I could just see when they're on the server, that'd be really cool. We have our, like our own little server. Uh, and I, you know, I could just hop on when I see that. I could even send them versions of this and we could all just like have a party in Minecraft. Oh my gosh. That'd be, that'd be pretty cool. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, there was a plugin where you could actually write uh, you'd have a virtual computer and you could write, I think it was Lua or something. So you could like make a switch where you'd actually toggle a lever in Minecraft and have something, uh -huh. have an LED turn on and off on your Arduino because you were making exactly what call. I need. That's similar to what I was planning on using this for, um, which is really? a Burning Man art project of my sister's that I was working with her on. And they're in Portland, they're doing an art show, but it's all socially distant. So you can't interact with anything. So we're setting up to have QR codes that you scan, which brings you to a web page, which lets you interact with the in, set, in place of the physical buttons on the Aww. project. That's super cute. <clears throat> it reminds me a little bit of Remo.tv, where people have uh, robotic, robotic uh, objects that you can interact with. Uh, just through your screen, you can like see through their eyes or like look at someone has a, a tree that they have Christmas lights on and you can pick the color on the screen and it'll like change and you'll see it change out in their yard. It's so cute. <laughs> During the virtual Burning Man, we actually had it set up that way. Ah! So you'd be in the virtual playa and be able to hit a button and it would actually pull up a video stream of all oh. the art boxes and it would be changing the LEDs as you click on the button. So you just have a bunch That's of people so clicking on it constantly and i'm like eh, how fast can this change <laughs> it's a good stress test yeah so mohib if i wanted to hook that up and get messages coming into my arduino um over soricom what would be the best way to do that would i Ooh, yeah. use beam to go to mqtt yeah so here i'll show you and we can do a little code walk through on that uh yes. see. screen one What's up? Let me see if I can boost the size there. I forgot how you zoom. <laughs> Let's see. We'll just do uh, this. Yeah, so we'll go back. So if you go into the SORCOM cloud examples for the NB1500, there's a basic Beam MQTT example. So like I said, Beam basically acts as kind of a forwarder to your cloud of choice. And so in here, um, it just uses the uh, Arduino MQTT client. And uh, so for those who are watching or, or who aren't familiar with MQTT, it's basically a uh, protocol for uh, publishing and subscribing to message topics. So uh, on your server, you would have, uh, you could create a topic, right? Some topic slash whatever. So in this case, I've done like a, I, I usually, usually my standard is to go with like, topic slash to and topic slash from, like to the device and from the device. So you would subscribe to this to the topic. Uh, so some other device or application could publish to that topic and then your device subscribes to it. And then down here, beyond all the connectivity stuff, there's an on MQTT message handler. So whenever a message comes through, uh, it'll tell you like what its topic is and what the body of the message is and then you can read all that and then run it through a separate function to like handle that command. So in this example, if you send just like a string to that uh, some topic slash two topic from somewhere else that says on or off, it'll turn the LED on or off. Awesome. Yeah, and, and which, 
What was that? Uh, could you show us which um, sketch this is in again? Yeah, so this is in the MKR yeah, anti starter. Right oh, okay, cool. Cloud oh, it's almost there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so what's great is like you don't have to do anything special here. Like you can just use this sketch as is. Um, maybe change the topics, obviously, but then you handle like actually configuring it to your MQTT broker uh, from the Soracom dashboard. So you could say like, this requires, you know, so you could set up like secure connections on there. So if you need a cert or anything like that, you can drop that in the cloud dashboard as opposed to like storing it on your device, which um, I'm sure Don can attest to that's a huge, huge pain. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, the maker boards make that better since they have the crypto chip. But if you can do that from the cloud dashboard, that's even easier. Oh, yeah. Also, I feel horrible. I didn't give everybody an opportunity to, to introduce themselves. Uh, so let's uh, track back and go do that real quick. So I'm going to start with Elijah. Can you introduce oh. yourself and just yeah. what you're planning? Uh, what I'm planning with the... Okay, so I'm Elijah Horland. Uh, I'm a maker, I think, obviously. And uh, <laughs> I, <laughs> I feel like everyone here could... Uh, have that title, and I was part of the show Mythbusters Junior. Uh, what I'm planning to do with my uh, with my 1500 is uh, I want to put the uh, the the sensor the um, the the sound sensor. You know, the I'm losing the name right now. It's like so the ultrasonic. Yeah, the ultrasonic sensor. That's what it's called. Uh, above my door, and I want to have me shoot me a text anytime that changes by a significant amount. Uh, that way, I can know when someone's entering my my room. I That's like awesome. it. It's like a layer alarm. Yeah. All right. And John. Hey guys, can you hear me? Okay, Jonathan. Yep. I'm one of the solution architects at Sarcom. Um, I've been doing some of the work around building the uh, examples, most of the maker stuff, the low-level stuff, which is my um, my interest in IoT stuff. Is the low-level hardware, messing around with power saving and connectivity and all that kind of stuff. So if you find any Bugs in those examples, let me know and I'll go sort something out. <laughs> Mega merge, we'll, uh, we'll work it out. Good to see you guys. I'm glad to see you're having fun playing with the maker board. Um, my project, I'm still working on it. I have a, we're building an owl box, an owl nesting box um, to put up outside. So I'm oh. a uh, ultrasonic range finder to tell when it's full of little owls. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that would spark your interest, Alex. So for those that don't know, Alex has a robot owl. Uh, that they were Archimedes. <laughs> I should do something with him. Have Archimedes detect other owls? Like real owls? <laughs> like my, if you put an owl cam in your box, then I could get Archimedes to do a little dance when there's owls in there. Oh. <laughs> L cam, yeah, that's a good idea. I think that's the ah. <laughs> Might have to stretch out to apply for that. <laughs> and uh, so power down the garden could be interesting, but we'll work we'll work something out. There's gonna be something in the L box part of the house. <laughs> All right, Zach, why don't you introduce yourself and uh I know you kind of mentioned your project already. Yeah, I'm Zach. Um I my background's a lot of home automation and IoT ish stuff and robotics. Um, the art projects are something that I'm starting to get more into, especially doing the IoT connected art projects. And so it's transforming the art project that used to only work off of Wi-Fi with NGROC running. Uh, we took up one step with a different Wi-Fi board. And then with the um, art show going on, trying to not need a reliance on Wi-Fi and issues because it's actually getting installed into various hotel lobbies over the next two months, I think. Um, it makes it a lot easier to try to take these projects and go tra travel with them. Very nice. That's cool. I'm pretty cool. And Don. Don is awesome. So wow. I have a couple projects um, going on here. I'm actually teaching an IoT class where we're doing a lot of um, MQTT and reading sensors from Wi-Fi based devices. So we're going to be able to look at how we can essentially just swap out this hardware and start to do cellular without a whole lot of work there. So that's kind of like the, the boring, just get data going. 
Um, the more exciting thing, since there's a GPS sensor in the kit, um, figured we want to do something where we can get this mobile. We don't have to be connected to Wi-Fi and also to add some NeoPixels. So we, we'll be able to report back kind of where it is. I was thinking about maybe hooking it into a backpack or something like that. So as you're out, then allowing other people to send messages in and control the uh, colors and patterns on the NeoPixels. Oh, that's cool. Awesome. And David. Yeah, I'm uh, David, also known as iShotJR, uh, maker, IoT, machine learning, that kind of stuff. Um, I'm excited about the kit because I'm working on a, a robotic menagerie um, to live in the backyard. And uh, each little robot um, will be a different animal and will have a different task. And I think because this has the ultrasonic sensor, this is going to be, this is going to sit in the corner uh, in our garden. And there's a certain plant that dogs in our neighborhood like to visit. I think I might uh, it make something to, to change their mind about whether they like to visit that corner anymore using the ultrasound <laughs> sensor and uh, some kind of actuator and uh, have it let me know when this visit is occurring uh, using the cellular connectivity. Nice. Years ago, um, I made like a little demo because my friend's dog kept um, making a mess on a family rug. So <laughs> I... Um, put like a beacon on the dog's collar. And so if they got near the area, and I think I used a Raspberry Pi to detect it, it would just like play an alarm noise. But it, that dog was so old, it was just like, I'm, I'm not, not gonna listen. It's just like, I'm still gonna, this is where I do business. <laughs> I forgot it's got the buzzer, so it could be an audible uh, alert. So that's cool. Yeah, I should have used something more uh, uh, shrieking. Like the buzzer would work definitely on a dog. What did you use to detect when they got there? I used a beacon, so just detect near, far, or okay. uh, immediate location. I was trying to do exactly that with my dog before. <laughs> but I had a hard time figuring out what to use to beacon reliably. I like the idea, though, of like a robot menagerie just like attack. Like, not attack, but like <laughs> scaring the dogs, just like... <laughs> <laughs> Well, yes, yeah, so the idea is that each animal or each creature will have a different purpose. So, for example, there's going to be a butterfly with solar powered wings, and that's going to provide power. Oh. For the and then there's going to be a snail that is just a big battery. And so the solar power from the butterfly is going into the snail. And uh, there's a couple other different. Uh, there's a centipede whose legs provide water for all the plants. And Oh, that's cool. Yeah. I love this idea. It's like That's awesome. Awesome. robot land. <laughs> I just saw the question from Gary, and yeah, this is that iShot JR. This is this is the one and only iShot JR. Any other imposters, uh, and not the real iShot JR, but this is that. <laughs> you are everywhere, man. Apparently, David shows up on our hackster streams often too. The rangefinder might scare off the dog on its own. The dog may be able to hear. Oh yeah. Oh wow. There's a uh, ultrasonic clicks. If that yeah. work, will. That's interesting. <laughs> All right, Alex. Hey, what's up? I'm Alex Glow. I do a video at hackster.io. So uh, actually, you can find a bunch of cool Soracom projects at hackster.io slash Soracom. And uh, yeah, as mentioned before, I make companion robots. So we've got Fenrir over here, who's based on a fennec fox, and Archimedes, who's based on an owl. And uh, yeah, I'm thinking I found, a, I dug out my grove box of Grove things and found a couple of servos. So that might be a cool starting point to, like maybe I can emulate something in the game when my uh, family members show up. Like, I feel like animating like a creeper or something, like in uh, reference to your hoodie, Elijah, would be a little bit complicated because you've got like multiple little walk act actions and stuff, but maybe, yeah. There's lots of animals and, uh, you know, and stuff in the game. So maybe like a little chicken or something or a bee or yeah, there's a bunch of cool animals in there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> James says ultrasonic sensors don't work on cats. Their fur absorbs ultrasound. They are ninjas. I would believe it. I can test on both. I got dogs and cats around here. We'll find one and see if he wants to play. <laughs> Mohib, I think you're on mute. 
Oops, sorry. Yeah, I like this common theme of like hacking with animals in yes. like a positive way, obviously not encouraging any form of animal testing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I do kind of, I wonder if that's true though. Uh, do, uh, cats fur is actually absorbing sound. I, Who knows? I feel like the science on that would be dodgy. I feel like it was a joke, but maybe. That's what, like science, that's what testing is for. <laughs> not testing, it's collaboration with animals. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> So, Elijah, uh, I hear you've done some near space projects. I'd like to see like your thoughts on like using cellular for near space. Uh, near space. I'm trying to remember. Balloons. Um, <laughs> the balloon. Oh, yeah. Um, just using it. Uh, hold on. Uh, for the balloons, I just had it go up and it tech. It, it was mainly smooth. I had it go up and it would text me when it landed. But when the balloon landed, it sort of landed in no cellular zone. So obviously that was a bad uh, idea. Like, n <laughs> not idea, but, you know, that was a, I, something I hadn't planned for. Uh, but other than that, I guess it went uh, smoothly. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's just interesting to track. So what I've learned, um, I remember I sent up a near space balloon with a uh, cellular tracker once before. And... I was like, oh, I'll totally get, like, a full flight path. But basically it just goes dark after once it hits, like, 70,000 yeah. feet. I think actually yeah. 30,000 feet is when it stops. Uh, yeah, uh, eventually it just stops. Oh, sorry, go on. Oh, no, no, no. And uh, then uh, it stops, and then, like, you just hope you get lucky that wherever it lands, there's a cell tower nearby. Yeah, and it I was not lucky enough to get that. I remember it stopped tracking, and then it stopped for a while because usually I would get consistent uh you know, reminders of its location. And then I got one final one that was like, there was a big gap in between it. Oh, wow. And then that, it did, <laughs> I just had never, to sort of go off of that. Yeah, that's never Thank fun. You. Trying to track Thank it you. and then... I didn't even... Oh. Being ...within the scope of the design parameters for the cellular, cellular towers. Right? Oh yeah, plan your flight path around towers if you're gonna use cellular. That's a good point, and, so... Yeah. That's one thing to make note of, like, uh, so since the MQR NB1500 is using, like, kind of these new 5G networks for IoT, uh, the rollout isn't complete. Uh, for the U.S., there's towers everywhere, so there's full coverage uh, in a lot of the other world, a lot of other parts of the world, but it's still, like, starting to come out. So I always encourage people to, like, and I think, John, you might know the link for this. There's a website you can go that'll show you the coverage in your area. So, if, like, I, I live in, like, a Faraday cage, basically. So I can't get any signal out. So I have, like, a giant USB extender so I can put it on my patio and point it towards the nearest tower. I, I somehow tend to keep living in houses that are, like, just outside of cellular reach. So I have, like, one bar anywhere in my house. It doesn't matter what carrier I have. Just live in poor locations. <laughs> and I keep wanting to do a IoT project for festivals, but every time I think about trying to do it and get messages to it, I'm like, I'm not going to have good enough cell coverage. So I've been hoping I can find something that falls back to SMS for control for those times where you can't get a full LTE connection. Yeah, so you can do SMS with uh, Soracom, so uh, that is a possibility, and you can then, I think, forward that message out somewhere else, right? So it's a common thing people will do is where they'll have SMS be like a data transport. Instead of just doing text messages, you're actually using that to send data somewhere. I just found a thing called um, pixelpapercraft.com where you can... Oh, sorry, did I interrupt somebody? <laughs> No, uh, I actually was about to interrupt you, so go on. <laughs> <laughs> Not intentionally. It's, it's, just just a site with a, it's just a site with a bunch of Minecraft paper craft. Okay, there we go. <laughs> also, uh, I guess we're still doing introductions. Ah! Okay, I sit down. Uh, sorry. I, I just want to mention with the, with the project, you know, the, the balloon project that uh, I sent up, I wasn't completely in the dark. I did have satellite. Uh, I did have a satellite tracker on it, but I also wasn't the one who found it. It was a school in a nearby area, so. Oh, nice. 
Well, that's nice, and they returned it to you? Yeah, they they did. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't. I had planned to bring it to a Maker Fair, but I didn't make that quota. But you know, I still got it back. So, nice. I'm still hoping. Uh, it's been three years since I lost the near space balloon with the two thousand uh, dollar <laughs> VR camera on it. So, oh, are we uh, talking about I, balloons? Yeah. Also, uh, we have Alvaro just joined us. So Alvaro is an awesome <laughs> hacker and maker from our community. So Alvaro, we just, uh, you, let, why don't you just go and introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Alvaro. Um, I'm mostly a firmware engineer um, that, and I have a lot of weird personal projects involving, ah, I'm blurry, uh, cheese making and weather stations mostly. So that's kind of my interest. It's in uh, remote weather stations. Nice. So I'm kind of curious what we could combine with like the animals hacking projects with near space balloons without it necessarily being lifting a animal in a balloon. <laughs> I don't think they're allowed to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I asked. Here's what's left of a near space balloon I found on the beach. Oh, you found one? This is Whoa. a weather didn't happen to have a VR camera in it, did it? <laughs> <laughs> I think they, they throw these things off from Valencia every day at noon, and uh, one of them managed to get back on the beach. But the salt water was not very friendly to it, so there's not much left. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be surprised if a near space balloon made it all, from here made it all the way to, because uh, you're in the UK. <laughs> you're way out there, John. Can we pick up... Um, Toboggans and sedges and other wreckage on the beaches here from Canada, from, from North America. I mean, if they don't pop, they'll they'll keep going for a long time. <laughs> yep, that's true. I can tell you that from experience. There's actually a group, I, I want to say, at oh, either yeah. Princeton or Stanford that made a DIY ballast system so they could keep their near space balloon floating for, like, days. Uh, they were able to send it from, I think, California to... Um, Moscow. <laughs> I, that's, I mean, that's how, that's how Project, Lund, Project Loon did it. Um, they had basically two balloons, one inside the other, and one of them is filled with helium. And the other one, you just compress air into it to make the balloon heavier and then let air out to make it lighter. So then you could kind of go up and down without uh, getting rid of the helium, I guess. That's that makes smart. more sense. The The one that I saw, they were, they just had like a, a thing, a hopper full of pellets. They, 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 they do that the too. Pellets. Yeah, so that, that, that's pretty common. But that you can only go one way, right? Like you can only go up. But if, if you want to go down, you need to make yourself heavier. Um, and, and I think the record was over 300 days uh, aloft. So they, they could go around the world. Wow. Rest in peace, by the way. Uh, Loon's gone, but. <laughs> So yeah, uh, what are some other ideas people have? This the oh. balloon talk reminded me. I actually forgot. I, I, a couple years ago, I made a uh, a cellular um, <clears throat> just model rocket tracker. I totally forgot about that whole project. But uh, <laughs> obviously, it's not going anything uh, like the distance uh, <laughs> that these uh, balloons are. But uh, it worked pretty well, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I have a. Oh, sorry. Uh, did I cut you off, or was that the end of your sentence? No, no, no. Okay. Uh, I actually do a, have a project planned. It's been in plan for a while now. Uh, I want to just sort of remotely control. I have a boiler in my basement that controls my heaters. And I wanted to know if it was possible, like, remotely control it using a using a solenoid. Like, to would that be possible with the uh, with the 1500 board I have? Like, can I just shoot, shoot a text? Because I already know... Uh, I'm new to Arduino, so do I do I have to use the uh the what do you call it, the board that connects all the things? The Grove. Yeah, the Grove. No, so you can use uh the Arduino as it is, um, or you can plug in like there are Grove modules for running actuators. Oh. So, uh, yeah, the board the carrier board just breaks it out. So yeah. if you wanted to, you could hook it up to your own custom actuator board or whatnot, uh, and then. Oh. Use the SMS message or MQTT to send a command command to your to the boiler. So just like, I'm sorry. Oh no, I was yeah. just like, can you repeat the part? Like, what what is the boiler in again? Uh, the boiler, uh huh. The boiler's in my basement. It just controls my heaters, and I want to know if I could like oh. remotely see its pilot light uh, and stuff. That'd uh, be cool. No. And with it being cellular, it could be a good fallback if like Wi-Fi goes down. 
Yeah. Yeah, that's safe. what I was gonna say. Like good backup. You know, I have a lot of IoT projects that go into a Raspberry Pi, and then the Raspberry Pi sends it up to the web. But then if you lose uh, Wi-Fi, or then you're you're done. I, I was uh, thinking cellular backup for the 3D printer setup I have. Oh yeah, so we also remotely have... stop it. <laughs> yeah, remotely stop it, or you know, if the sensor or the relay fails for the bed heater again. That happened to me one time where the relay just went out and I'm sitting at home. I'm like, it smells like really hot plastic. And I think oh, the no. bed was about, the bed was hitting like 160. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I put, I, a, like, I put a smoke detector on my uh, enclosure. I have a Nest th smoke detector right next to it. But, but that, that doesn't help useless, yeah. if the internet goes down. And now I have the 3D printer set up in the garage. So it's even more outside so i'm not aware of what's going on with it <laughs> so, so i like the um the, the growth connector what what's cool about it is it makes it so you don't have to solder you don't have to breadboard you don't have to mess around with any of that stuff you can just plug it in you don't even have to like know whether it's like i2c or analog or digital it's like they will only plug into the right things and so it's really easy to get started but you can just take the m care and plop it into a breadboard and plug whatever you want into it or solder stuff directly onto it so you can use it with anything this is just like to make it right. really fast and easy to get started. Oh, there's that, also okay, like that eight might bajillion be... different Grove modules. Like I've got yeah, a I'm relay assuming... here. There's like touch sensors. Yeah. I'm sure I can find like a one. Oh, yeah. nice. Uh, is, uh, are they all I squared C mostly or your? No, so uh, there's one that's labeled TWI and that's your I squared C. And then the rest are like, they just break out digital and analog pins on the board. Oh, nice. And okay. then there's a serial one at the bottom, which is what's used for the GPS. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I could. Criminals too. I cheat a lot, and I just take like Grove cables and use them as door jumpers. Yeah. <laughs> but you also have the headers exposed right on the board, which you're gonna laugh at me when I was plugging in the LED thing. I was like, oh, I need to connect to the Grove pins, and so I put the jumpers in the Grove cable. And it was it wasn't until the live stream today I'm like, oh yeah, there's headers on there also. I just <laughs> <done> that. <laughs> But Elijah, I want to go back to this boiler part. Do you have your dad's permission to be modding the <laughs> boiler? Because that sounds like dangerous. Yes, uh, I have his permission. But a, a bit more of a less dangerous project that could benefit from this uh, is I've actually started, well, started it about a year ago, um, making these little RC cars that I plan to drive around my school. I call them like rats because I just remember there being a lot of rats in my middle school. I'm in, I'm in high school now. But, um, <laughs> uh, I was wondering, yeah, there's probably like a Grove uh, motor uh, thingy, but it might benefit because the way I've been controlling it is literally just by having it host its own Wi-Fi thing and then connecting to it from its from my laptop. I have the Raspberry Pi host like a Wi-Fi hotspot. I connect to it from my laptop. I run the thing so it hosts its own like website with the camera on it inside the Wi-Fi hotspot. Then I connect to it via SSH and terminal and then run the commands to move it. It might just be way simpler to send it like forward, backward, side text or something. Or like yeah. turning text, I guess. What is, tank turning. What is the uh, response time like for the cellular? What is the lag? Would you be able to, would you be able to steer fast enough for the cellular? Uh, so I, I wouldn't use it for any real time thing. Yeah. So like with cellular, so that's one thing to think about it as with uh, cellular for IoT, it works a little different than like cellular you would have on your phone or on a hotspot, right? Because that's like high bandwidth data. Uh, so if you want to do a lot of things that were like long lived, you'd use a platform like Soricom because um, it's really cheap to like keep it going for like you're not paying like $30 a month to like just have a, a line open, right? You're paying like a couple of cents really to keep this thing going if you're doing low bandwidth. Um, but uh, you could send it commands still. And like the way I approach it is only use the cellular part for valuable interactions. So that's why tiny ML is great. Uh, you know, you can run your machine learning model on the device for reading sensors and then only ping out when it's something really important, right? Yeah, that's, uh, that's the way like, to go. Make it, yeah. make it autonomous, make it autonomous and then just tell, tell it to when you want it to do something different, like stop or go a different way or something like that. Yeah, I'd, I'd make it all time. I actually did a project for Microsoft where I made these radio control cars that people could drive via Xbox controllers and via Windows phones. Um, so let, send me a link to your project because I've done a lot of stuff with that. I'd like to see how you're doing it and if I can help out in any way. 
Uh, I don't think I have the project up anywhere official. Oh, that's fine. Yeah. Just whenever you get yeah. it. Just... <laughs> yeah. Well, so one thing I did uh, a while back is um, yeah, I'll pull it up. Uh, I wrote a project when I was at Amazon on how to make a telepresence robot uh, using um, a Raspberry Pi. And uh, it was kind of that concept of like I had it send commands and then uh, also output video over WebRTC and have a little app. So here, I'll share my screen here real quick. And this was faster. There we go. So this one I did really basic, like left, right, forward, stop. And so it output video and there was a whole web app. Uh, but in the same vein, like what I was doing was I just had it, every time you press the button, it would send a rest, a single rest command uh, through AWS IT, so through MQTT. And it would talk to the Raspberry Pi that way. So. Um, and then I had the video as a separate app running, uh, outputting. So what I would, could imagine you doing is if you still wanted, because I totally am all on board for robots that run on Soracom <laughs> uh, or anything really. And uh, yeah, you could have the video, like we we're talking, David, be uh, somewhat autonomous, or maybe you only output an image sometimes. Yeah. Like uh, the idea of a Mars rover, right? The Mars rover, you send commands to it every what, 20 minutes it takes to get to Mars, I think. Depends. <laughs> I mean, the commands would go much faster over Celia, obviously. We're not on a different <laughs> planet. <laughs> but yeah, you could do some cool stuff there. Yeah, yeah how many light minutes is it from, like, my work to my house? <laughs> well, actually, I don't know if you've seen a Donkey Car, um, but it's an autonomous Raspberry Pi-based vehicle. You could train that to drive around in the school, and it could just be doing laps on its own, and then you could just, you know, tell it to stop or, you know, turn around or things like that. And then oh, yeah. you just I, it occasionally. It might be fun to uh, hook up instead of the movement stuff to it. Uh, I have uh, speak. I have it speak like TTS stuff sometimes. Uh, so it might be fun to send it like the text-to-speech lines from my phone. Just like text <laughs> it. And then oh, yeah. That'd be great for pranks. <laughs> you wanted to like stash it somewhere. Yeah, oh, I mean. Is, huh? I was going to say this is the donkey car. Oh, that's yeah. cool. The TTS yeah. is barely like. I, I'm looking for a better one. I forget which one I'm using, but it's you can't really understand it unless you already know what it's saying. <laughs> and that's time for our special hour. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like I'm, this I house is getting raided. <laughs> uh, no, I was going to say, um, there's some. Uh, so, what text to speech library are you using or app? Uh, I actually forgot. If I were to pull it up i remember that it was a bit buggy at the time because of raspberry pi uh i believe they just released the new uh raspberry pi os or something uh -huh. so i can't i can't remember if that's why it was buggy but i was only able to get to work via having python run terminal commands yeah. instead of the intended actual way that it was supposed to work uh if i pull it up like if i boot it up i might be able to use it yeah, it probably uh, sounds like I wasn't, you were using eSpeak. Was it like a really robot? Yeah, I was using eSpeak. I was yeah, using so eSpeak e is cool. eSpeak does, I think, let you change voices on it. Uh, so you can, like, alter that. But uh, there, I, I would also recommend, like, there are cloud services that provide, like, really good speech synthesis. So, like, uh, probably every major there's also, cloud provider. And then there's, like, a lot of third-party groups that do that. I was wondering if there's a way to use the, uh, the Daniel UK voice from, uh, what do you call it? Oh, shoot. I'm forgetting the website, but uh, I'll probably remember it later. I also, uh, an Adafruit TTS board caught my eye, but it was out of stock when it when I saw it, so. Ooh. I believe it was Adafruit. I can't remember. Oh, I like that. Yeah, those are cool because you can do them on, like, a really small Oh, is it this eMic 2 text-to-speech module? Looks like I it's in stock. Beliefs. Oddcast, that's what it is. Oddcast is the... Oddcast. the uh, no, 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 that's not the board I use. The, the Oddcast is just the <laughs> website that has the Daniel UK voice that I was thinking of. Uh, that would be really cool to use. One thing I wanted uh, to do a while back was uh, there's a way to make your own voice synthesizers, um, kind of like deep voice, like deep fakes, but I wanted to do it with Talkie Toaster from the show Red Dwarf. So there's like a voice <laughs> that, and I wanted to capture that and make like a text-to-speech Talkie Toaster. <laughs> And so I just like detect things and say like, hello there, person with this type of shirt on. <laughs> and then ask them if they want toast. That's, in succession. That's so good. So, so Zach, I know you've built some prank 
projects in the past? I've done a few different projects with Cellular. Um, one of them was a cube that could send messages between uh, two people. I think I actually have it. Yeah, I remember Sting. seeing this in its infancy last time I was in San Francisco. I never actually posted videos of it. I should actually upload those. Um, so I got two of these, and my girlfriend had the other one in Boston at the time. And it was this cube with three Ooh. different LED matrixes. And it's running off of Raspberry Pi Zero. But then when I sent it with her, she would have no way to connect it to her Wi-Fi. Um, because she was finishing up her master's in dorms. And so I was like, okay, what can I do instead? And I ended up doing a cellular modem on it. And then you would interact with it just by tapping on it to scroll through like different messages that you could send. And then it would have a screensaver like mode where it'd be like message waiting, tap on it again. It would scroll the message across it that you That's sent. Really so cool. What device were you using on that? That was the hologram. Yeah. Or uh, what module? I don't remember. Whichever one you gave me. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, your posters are amazing. Thank you. I, I saw them and I was like, I kind of need to get these ones. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still trying to settle into the place that we moved to a few months ago. Oh, wow. It's looking great so far. Got a lot of fun art projects. There's that. And then I have Nano Leafs up on the ceiling. Oh, and oh, then nice. working on a new Nano Leaf layout. I can't see it. Oh, that's cool. um, that's going to go behind my monitor later mm. today. Nice. I've thought about building um, kind of like a metal sculpture that's triangular, that's filled with uh, those bullet style NeoPixels. They're like Christmas lights. Yeah. yeah. And just have like this living sculpture that lights up. Oh. But like based on some like interesting data. Like I've I, always been fascinated by like, I forgot which. Uh, News. Makes me think of a light bright. Mm -hmm. yeah. But like yeah. a self driven one. Just just hook up a Mighty Ohm um, Geiger counter, and then whenever particles hit it, you can do all sorts of generative art. Oh, yeah. That's I actually like a it. cool idea. I'm working on another Brayman art project that's an uh, art car. It's a Pac Man art car. <laughs> so I'm going to do it. I'm working with the people that built the ghosts. Uh, Brain Man, but I'm going to do it with all uh, NeoPixels, and I have like a few thousand NeoPixels on my dining room table right now <laughs> for this, but I'm trying to figure out what to display on it, because yeah, it'll be yellow and be Pac-Man, but I wanted to do NeoPixels because I have a giant circle screen at that point. <laughs> if you do so, need a Geiger counter, I got an extra kit. Uh, I, I, I have three of them, I think. Okay. <laughs> I just didn't know. <laughs> I have like three Geiger counters and a few seismic sensors. That's a Seismic sensor. That would be fun for this. Oh, like, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, the problem. Get many people to jump up and down at the same time. So well, you can <laughs> like I live right next to a fault line, and the problem with seismic sensors is they'll trigger from you walking across your house. So I have to be mm. able to put it somewhere like remote where people don't walk nearby. Oh, yeah. Good point. Or so drive. That's... Yeah. Yes. So that's another way to look at it. I didn't think of. I keep thinking of like putting the modem on the lit up project so you could do like these remote art installations but if you used it instead as like the you know like the start data kit collection or whatever, yeah you use that to put it out in those remote areas collect that data back and then bring that to a central art installation I mean, that might have like wired internet so it can like still collect it so, that's what yeah. i want to do i got this really fancy little weather station um, oh my gosh yeah i know it's Ooh. it's fully solid state so it's a uh, rain detection with a piezoelectric uh, transducer. It's got ultrasonic wind uh, speed and direction, and then it's um, temperature, humidity, pressure, and stuff. Uh, so this is like a really fancy one. And it, I mean, the, the connector is just, I think it's RS-232. So I just need to make an uh, RS-232 to TTL adapter um, and then get like a big solar panel. And then I can put this out somewhere where I want to measure all these things, uh, not in my apartment that I don't have any windows that like, <laughs> or well, useful. You know, I couldn't uh, do uh, legit measurements of wind between buildings. 
Yeah, I've been looking for some good weather sensors because I, I being yeah. in the Bay Area, I got really into doing air quality sensors. Mm -hmm. I was like, I want to collect more weather data, and I haven't been able to find any good weather yeah, yeah. stations. I, I mean, I've been making my own, so you, you can see over there, there's like an anemometer uh, uh, somewhere here. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. The, the, that's just my test one, and I have one at my dad's house in, in Mexico, one at my friend's house. And right now, they all kind of report up to like a little website that reports weather, but those are kind of my own homemade boards using like LoRa or um, other things. So, you know, using cellular would fix the problem that, of having to set up a Raspberry Pi or a LoRa gateway or anything like that. You can just deploy it and nobody has to worry about, you know, Wi-Fi and anything, it's, it's, which is it's super, super. Uh, yeah. Well, what's Thanks. cool is uh, we have a we have a Sigfox platform, so you can get Sigfox data. Or, uh, oh, LoRa nice! Data. Are there a lot of gateways? Sigfox around? and LoRa into uh, Circle. Actually, John, you might know more about that. Our, yeah, uh, I've done some I've done some stuff with Sigfox. I have a home project. I was testing it. Um, where is it? Do you, where do you know like how our gateway coverage is and like all there that? We go. I can get back to you on that number. Ooh, whoa. Oh, I haven't seen battery. a battery like that in forever. Six volt? <laughs> uh, Wait, like oh this? Uh, just everybody has this sitting at their desks. <laughs> I, don't know. I have a six volt battery like that, yeah. Uh, man, I switched to lipos. <laughs> all these, these are a little less explosive, yeah. It's <laughs> not fair. rechargeable, though. Uh, I think... Do we, do we, do we I have, have a module with the big box. I'm going to find it. What was that, Elijah? I have uh, another project. I realized some of my, uh, a lot of my projects actually might benefit from this. Maybe not in the way I originally intended. Uh, I have a project. It's a cat dog human detector. Uh, obviously, <laughs> I took it apart because I put it in a pumpkin for the hack pumpkin challenge. And when you put something in a pumpkin, it really only lasts till maybe the end of uh, the middle of November, you know? Um, <laughs> so I had to take it out. But if I were to rebuild it, I would probably use cellular for it to text me like if it what it detected uh because what it would do is it would use google's uh like like a cat dog human thing and it would be like oh is this a human is this a cat is this a dog if it were a dog or a cat sorry if it were a human or a dog it would it had led in the teeth that would blink back and forth and if it were a cat it had a laser in its eye that would uh move huh. across the ground that I, like frankenstein from a cat toy and it would probably be easier just to use uh, cellular so i could put it wherever instead of just keeping it in my house connected uh, well, for a second when you first said it, I was like, a cat dog detector? As no. a cat dog? A lone dog <laughs> is a little cat dog? I don't have I, any It's a show from when we were young. I'm happy yeah. enough, I wasn't the only one who thought that. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, cat, comma, dog, comma, human detector. Those, those commas, they're important. I, I, commas <laughs> save lives like the let's eat. Yeah, that's the I, I know if you could do a cat dog detector, I'd be impressed, though. <laughs> <laughs> it would just never go off. Yeah. Well, but it's like it that elephant off, repellent device. I it as, like snake oil. <laughs> well, no, yeah, it's the it's like that elephant repellent device where like you know does it work while well, you do see any elephants? <laughs> right. <laughs> Have you been attacked by an elephant? <laughs> like it's working. You're welcome. Yeah. If a tree falls in that the forest, will the sensor hear it? <laughs> yes. The sensor will. The fr people won't. Oh, I'm trying to find my freaking. Micro I, USB cable. I haven't asked, but what's the power consumption on this guy? Like, um, uh, yeah. can I go into pretty deep sleep mode? Say that uh, again. Uh, like yeah, the power yeah. consumption. If Sorry. if I'm trying to run this off a small battery and solar panel, and maybe only transmit once an hour or once every half hour, what's what are the power numbers like? The real, the real power consumer is the uh, is the modem, the one that's transmitting. It wakes up and starts doing stuff. It can pull like it's supposed to be up to two hundred milliamps. The okay. real power consumer is the friends we made along the way. <laughs> <laughs> the the one thing I would say about that is my experiences in the past doing some of the cellular stuff is you have to account for time for it to create a handshake yeah. with the yeah, tower. That's what so next. That that can take. But my experience is like anywhere from 30 seconds to three minutes, depending on how good of coverage you have. Yeah, and sometimes it also needs to like download new profiles or something of that sort. Yeah, so yeah, that's yeah. going to be the power drain right there. Okay. I yeah, think it's no, going to be waking it up. 
I've never used Cellular before, and like my projects, I'm going into like the tens or hundreds of microamps, like average. But um, you know, you just bigger battery, bigger uh, solar panels, fine. But I'm I, like I have no background in Cellular, so I'm, I'm mostly curious. But if you're do if you're waking up like once an hour, once every two hours, if you don't need real time data, like do it every four hours and send a batch of data. Yeah, yeah. Which with for weather, it's like. You know, uh, unless you're trying to act on something, and it could also be like if it starts raining, wake up and, and send some like, hey, it's raining. But um, yeah, it's yeah. hilarious. The power, the power requirement for the modem on the um, the hardware documentation. So if you go on the GitHub site, got links out to it. Oh, perfect. I'll, I'll, I'll check it out. In um, oh, go ahead. I was going to say this. I was going to make a stupid joke. <laughs> This is the best. So I know I said originally uh, we talked for an hour, but I'm down to keep chatting for a bit if you guys are. I just sure. want to try and get this first thing uploaded. Da, 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 da. I uh, I figured that I would test with this Minecraft sword PCB that I got. I think it's like a diamond oh, sword at yeah. DEFCON one time. Oh, yeah. Oh, the SAO. Um, like yeah, expander. shitty add-ons. I was about to say, it looks like it's got power. I took out, I took out the double uh, A batteries because it makes it lots lighter. But then I could just like have it go up when someone's, you know, like a mailbox indicator or whatever. That's <laughs> and a I got good this... application, a mailbox indicator. Yeah, true. It's a classic. Should you use all the old DEF CON badges as like different indicators on the wall? <laughs> yeah, oh, that'd be amazing. <laughs> Yeah, yeah they have, they have, really good, they have, they have a wall. good wall, yeah, but they yeah. don't do anything. They just sit there. Well, I mean, like, you're, oh, yeah. you're, you're, you can reprogram all of them, so. <laughs> They're not useful yeah. add-ons, right? They're <laughs> shitty. Yeah. <laughs> True. This is going to be a useful add-on, so maybe they'll have to change the name. Yeah, it's for, for context for anybody watching uh, DEF CON, the hacker convention, there's a whole uh, culture of creating circuit board art, and one of those things is to make it more accessible for people to make Oh, let me so get my board art, they made these SAO uh, standard, basically a small little add-on that can light up and it can attach to larger badges. So uh, I love that little sword thing. Uh, it was Brian, was wasn't it? Came up with it or am I lying? I can't remember who made the Minecraft sword. Uh, or oh, yeah, mean, no, SAO is... standard was, yeah, that yeah. was Brian Benchoff. Yeah, he came Hack up with it. This says on it. Yeah. B-O-Z-E. Yeah. It's got an outline of some state that I don't recognize. <laughs> <laughs> the Pac-Man. Oh, nice. Oh, oh is that a uh, um, Nick Pissarro? Nick Pissarro, yeah. Yeah, yeah he makes some really cool ones. That's cool. That's awesome. Original OG DEFCON 14 badge. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Oh, cool. This is the badge that started it all. Uh, I it. only have gotta... going back to 19. Yeah, I've got the Matt Damon badge here somewhere. <laughs> that was was the uh, uh, Andex War badge. I think, for this this is a good one. The mustache, or <laughs> uh, yeah, <coughs> uh, mine's in pieces right now. I took it wow. apart, but this was the uh, Damon badge. I just oh, pulled out oh, almost all of my badges. This one's from Stephen office. and Claire. <laughs> yeah, it's just like. I like cool. how this is turning into a badge. <laughs> yeah. no totally I feel so lucky. Naturally, out. it just had to. Wait, Elijah, do you not have any uh, circuit badges? I have to fix this. So. I've just wait, no, I have it. ones that are non. That I have like Maker Fair ones, but they're I don't know where they are. Okay. I'm, I'm trying to remember where I put the black badge after moving. I've just gotten <laughs> wait, into. Wait, you got a black badge? badge? What did yeah. you do for a black badge? What for? Mystery box challenge. That was actually my first oh, DEF CON. Nice. Oh, no way. So I paid for DEF CON one time <laughs> in the last 10 years. That's extremely impressive. I didn't first sleep for like three 14. days. My, my first one was 18. And then I didn't sleep for like three days. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I then... went. Yeah, it, I, I went for the robot challenge, DEF CON bots to make it was a BB gun, autonomous BB gun, sentry gun. With a, like a webcam, and this is 2006, so I did that, an initial basic. I Would remember not recommend. that because I did. I remember running across that because I was making an uh, automated Nerf turret. 
Yeah. In about 2008, <laughs> looking for like tips on how to do it. Wait, okay, also so Zach, uh, I was gonna say Zach, you didn't sleep for an entire DefCon. There's a rule. <laughs> you know the rule. Three, three two, two, one. one right? Yeah. <laughs> three hours of sleep, two meals, and one shower a day. I got the two <laughs> meals, and I got like an hour and a half of sleep a day. <laughs> but you know, black badge did it pay off? Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll yeah. say it was worth it. That's like about three hundred bucks a year you're saving, at least. So. At least, and then. <laughs> You know, it's not about the money. It's more about being able to cut the entire line every year. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, I mean, I, I learned the new trick of just being pressed. Uh, <laughs> if, you get a, if you get a green badge, you also get to uh, skip the line. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah. You, uh, Alex, you need to go as pressed. Come on. I, I ended up should, gooning. Yeah. That, that year, I ended up gooning. Oh, that's and, another way. So then I had the goon badge plus the black badge. I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> you can go twice every day exactly you can clone yourself i uh i just wanted to share i just ripped open a new package from osh park since we were talking about badges Ooh. i've gotten into kaikad <gasps> and finally managed to start making my own art and this is an esp8266 programmer that i just designed oh, it's a yes. laser board um planchette but you can use it to program the ESP8266, and I'm so excited! Look at that! Oh my god, that is awesome. it looks so awesome. good. It's then in there like after dark colorway, and this is the first time I've seen it in real life. I also made this like ruler thing with some old school designs on it. But oh my gosh, I actually have to go in a minute, but I wanted to share. That, oh, awesome. oh, so excited. that reminded me of an old business card that I created. Um, that was a circuit board business card. Uh huh. Oh yeah, Those I remember cool. that. Oh, yeah, okay, sure again. <laughs> Strike down your enemies. Yep. And and, and the, they'll know who did the job. Yeah, and the chip would go in the center. Oh, what does it do? Uh, it was my resume on a SD card or <laughs> on a flash drive, yeah. essentially. So it That's was thick brilliant. enough to fit into a USB port. And then you just press the chip onto it, and then That's so good. flash it. Yeah, so I would just solder a chip on the back, which <laughs> the first time I printed them they actually did cut the hole out because they thought it was a mistake. Oh, no. And I was like, right. no, I actually had to mirror the pad so I could put the chip face up oh, instead of face down. What? Wow. That oh, was, you're sticking it in. That's sneaky, yeah. Because I wanted I it to not that. stick off the board. I didn't want anything oh, sticking no. off. I wanted it to be flush. Well, yeah, so they could have fly. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> what kind of package were you using reason. for that? Um... It was some microchip controller. I don't remember. Was it a like PIC32? Or... Yeah, it was a PIC32. This is back, what, 2008, or 2009? That's what I see, maybe? <laughs> yeah, because I remember you showed me your uh, solid state board that you would make back then. The From solid state relays. <laughs> that one. <laughs> that, cool. that one so and board. this board. That was the one. I, I literally have a entire tub. <laughs> it's, just, oh, awesome. it's just all circuit boards that I've designed. This will be me someday. <laughs> uh, yes, for now, I do have to hop off. I want my my... rocket controllers, too. <laughs> it's my Which... most popular one. Oh, the cheese board! Yeah, I'm saw... monitoring. <laughs> I like that. So I think IoT that... rocket oh. would be fun. <laughs> oh, what's that, Alex? I've decided that all of my uh, tools for technology should be like Eldritch. Uh, vaguely oh, design, Alex, we need oh, more let that, me show you so. something real quick. Uh, Please. Oh, this is so exciting. You have no idea. <laughs> it looks so good. Uh, Oshpark is amazing. Oh, yeah. I like the idea of like cyber witch tech. Oh, once, yeah. once you make all your, once you make all your boards, you gotta, you gotta do your Whoa. shadow box. Whoa. I like that idea. Yeah. This That's is from, so pretty. Well, Oshpark always gives you three of each, right? Or whatever. So, uh, so, so I have this one, and I have another one with like my first PCB ever, um, wow. like 2001, I think, that was hand etched and stuff. But uh, it's a fun way to display it. <laughs> Those are gorgeous. Uh, I've been trying to figure out what to do with the giant stash yeah, of shadow everything. Shadow boxes. And then you can box. LED strings inside or something. 
I, I, I think do that with this, just like shadow box it all spidered out. Well, and, and, and it could be running, like since it's cellular, just put battery in there and yeah, and then run an antenna like outside exhibit. because I still live in a cave. You should talk to uh, actually Seed and Snips.ai did a collaboration where they made like a little pegboard style. Uh, sort of base plate for a home automation system with like an Arduino and like a little LCD screen and uh, little standoffs and screws and stuff so you could arrange it however you wanted. And like Spider is really cool. Also, you could just make a little laser cut pegboard back thing yeah. for it. And uh, yeah. Anyway. Well, an excuse to finally fire up my CNC that I have not used. Yeah. Before. Because every time I get motivated to use it, it's like I live in a broken okay. complex. And oh, I don't yeah. want to be loud. Uh, yeah. Th that's how I felt about my laser cutter for a while. Every time I go to use it, I'm like, I have to reset this up, and I haven't done it. I haven't used it in over a move now. <laughs> oh. oh no! What do you have? Uh, it's the Muse. Ooh, okay. Nice. Hmm. All right, I'm gonna peace out. Thanks for having Bye, me Alex. on. Have an awesome Thank day, everybody. We're excited to see what you build. <laughs> yeah. Ciao. Always. I'm gonna actually take off to have coworkers going. Where are you? Yeah. Why aren't you responding? <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Thanks for sticking around. Friday. Yeah, thanks everybody for sticking around an extra couple minutes. Oh, yeah, um, thank, I'm, I, hopefully I can get to this this month. Um, and so I'll, I'll be sending questions your way. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm just saying, so this was like the first stream I've done since I joined Soricom. And so this was kind of a uh, a launching point to creating new content and feeling out this kind of yeah. you know style. So I would love to invite you guys on again, uh, probably like in a couple of weeks. And hopefully yeah, we'll have you guys are. follow up and see what everyone made. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I actually have a, a question. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, it. This is very off topic. Okay, it has nothing to do like it. It has nothing to do with like any uh, boards or anything. I heard a when when you were muted. I heard a click. Are you using like a blue Yeti or something as a mic? What's the? Yeah, I'm using a blue Yeti. Okay, yeah. I was just wondering. It was on my mind because I'm also using a blue Yeti. Uh, oh. oh, the click you probably heard was me playing around with the. Oh, okay. I heard like a. Oh yeah, the yeah. yeah. That's a good. You have a good ear. It must be youth. I don't, I, I'm I'm turning thirty this year, so maybe my hearing isn't the same. <laughs> Sorry, I was just curious. No, that's cool. Yeah, I I use the blue Yeti on like a little arm. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, but I'm thinking of switching to the Sure. Just made a um. Oh, the MV7 or. Yeah, their new one that's USB, but it's like their popular seven whatever. That's it's called. cool. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, this was great having you guys. Um, again, we'll chat soon. I want to see what you guys have been working on. Uh, and anybody who's watching, please go find everybody you've seen today uh, on social media. Like everybody does awesome stuff. Don like is amazing at software and hardware across the board, which is like rare to see in our field. Is someone who <laughs> understands the cloud and the embedded in an equal like awesome way. Um, and John is awesome. He's also, you're on Twitter as well, right, John? I certainly am. Awesome. And Elijah as well. Uh, and uh, David uh, is his username on here. So. Which is not. <laughs> oh, it's it's ISJR. It's not. I, I shot JR was taken, so it's Ish Jr. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Well, yeah. We'll uh, see you guys around. Thank you again for coming. Thanks, Mohib. Bye. Weekend. Thank you. Uh, oh. oh, there we go. Yeah, all right. Uh, thanks, everybody, for coming and sticking around for this live stream. We'll uh, see you at the next one. So uh, uh, hack the planet. Mm -hmm.